Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm gonna do my favorite books of 2017. So the best books I read in 2017. So I would say about half of these are new releases and the rest are just new to me. So um, they're kind of all over the board. Um, I, I feel like it's, it's pretty fantasy heavy this time, but you know, that's usually, it's one of my favorite genres. So I don't, that doesn't actually surprise me. Um, a lot of things, we're close, like on the list, there's some things on that like almost, but I stopped at 13. I think figured that was enough. And then I could, because I have two of them that, three of them <laughs> that actually are two books. I just lumped them together because they're the same author. So anyway, so we'll go with that. So the first one I don't have a copy of, I have not bought one yet and I'm thinking about doing that. And that is Hunger by Roxane Gay. Um, I really enjoyed this audiobook. I got it from the library um, for Nonfiction November and I really enjoyed this. This was a memoir of my body and um, she talks about her body issues um, as, a, as a teenager and then older as an adult and the things that it has to do with being overweight or and having um, um, horrible stresses from earlier in your life because she was raped as a young woman. So um, it's uh, there's a lot of, I would say there are trigger warnings, but I thought it was really well done. It was really hard hitting. I listened to this so quickly um, in my car because I was doing a commute for a couple of days seminar. So I was in the car like twice as long as I normally am because I was going across town and it took forever. And uh, so I uh, listened to it within, you know, four, four days or so in the car. And it was just, it was fantastic. And I highly um, recommend the audiobook because she reads it herself. So I'm really looking forward to picking up something else by her, maybe some of her fiction. So um, then, um, so number 12 <laughs> is um, Whispers Underground by Ben Aravonovich. And this is number three of the Rivers of London or Peter Grant series. Um, these are awesome little urban fantasies in London where um, uh, a police constable finds out that magic, there's magic in the world and he becomes an apprentice and he, um, again, this is book three. So I'm a little behind on the series. I read the first two close to when they first came out and then I read the sec the them again um, when I had to read it for a, a book group that I was in um, several years ago and then and we got to read it again for this book group that I'm, I'm now in up here in Portland. So um, I continued on and at least read the third book. So I at least read more this time um, and really enjoyed it. It's just a fun ride. I'm looking forward to um, reading more of these this next year and then trying to catch up. I also, if you've seen some of my book hauls, I have some graphic novels by him that are in this world as well, but I can't read them yet because I have to read a couple more books to get up to that point. So... But those are really fun urban fantasies and I, I really enjoyed them. Again, it's just a feel good. I mean, there's trauma and all that stuff too. And it's just, but it's so, it's the, the, the mysteries, urban fantasy stuff and the world building is just phenomenal. I, and, he, and he is so funny. The Peter Grant is just awesome. <laughs> he makes me laugh. Um, so number 11 is Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jody Taylor. Um, this is the first in the Chronicles of St. Mary series. Um, it's about like uh, historians traveling in time and checking out to see what really happened. And um, this book was really, um, really good. I really want to, I want to reread this and then continue on with the series. Um, cause I feel like I read it so fast cause I was so involved in it and I, I just want to read it again and then start, uh, book two. Um, the main character just pulls you in and, um, I just, uh, yeah, Max was just awesome. I just, and again, it was all the feels, the highs and the lows and all the stress and, but it was so good. So I wanna see where it goes with this series as well. So again, that was a start of a new series for me, but I really like that one. And then uh, number 10 is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. I loved this book. This is, um, was his first book, I believe. And it is just fun. <laughs> Phenomenally funny and it's because it, it says the boys are back in town and they're getting the band back together kind of thing and they're talking about mercenary bands so these guys 20 years before were like the top of the game they were the ones who went in and fought all the evil creatures or whatever so everybody loved them it's they're like the rock stars of the fantasy world it's awesome so now they've all gone their separate ways they've all made different decisions and again the band broke up for a good reason there is it does talk about it in here and then one of them comes to 
try to get everybody back together because his daughter has now become a mercenary and she is um, trapped in a in another I guess the next kingdom over or the next area over she's um, um, locked in the ca the castle now with all the demons are around them and all that stuff I I can't remember how to explain that but this was so much fun it was like totally road trippy you know like the road trip stuff and gathering all the guys back and it was just so much fun and um he has another book coming out um that deals with that mercenary daughter who went off so that'll be interesting too but I love the way this book just was a nice little this is actually ends up really well as a standalone if you want to just read one fantasy or a standalone at least or you know the other one's like a companion novel from what I understand so but this was just awesome and Clay is my one of my new favorite characters I just love him and I um I totally recommend that one um so number nine I'm gonna bring up two books by one of my favorite authors now technically these are kind of numbered and they're not I don't know there's it's kind of arbitrary I don't know it, the top ones yes are really numbered these are just like my they, these could all kind of intermix in the middle here but Nalini Singh is one of my favorite authors and um, she had a book from her side changeling series come out uh, Silver Silence I love this book it was just so much fun because the the shifters are bears <laughs> And they're so cute no but I, I really like this one and it was one of my char favorite characters silver who finally got her own book so I was all excited about that she was this really cool little background character who I wanted to know more about her so this was a cool book and and again I think it's number 16 from what I remember and then this is um, uh, number 10 in her guild hunter series uh, this is Archangel's Vi uh, Viper which has to do with um, Holly and and uh, Venom and they were just it was a fun story I really liked this so again they both continue <laughs> series but again this is an author that I pick her books up and I buy them when they come out and then I read them right away so they're not ones that sit on my shelf waiting those ones are like I pick them up almost like within days of getting them if I don't pick them up the day um, okay so anyway uh, number um, eight is I'm gonna put uh, Yoon Holly and Nine Fox Gambit and Raven Stratagem. Now, I was definitely one of the people who picked up um, Nine Fox Gambit and did not mind that I didn't understand what was going on right away. I was intrigued and I still rolled with it. I still probably don't know really what's going on in this. I know it has to do with a uh, hereditary. Ha! I can't talk. Right. <laughs> I can't say that word. Forget it. But it has to do with the calendar and those who follow the correct calendar and those who don't are are um, heretics so um, and they have to go to this base to kind of stop the heretics so um, and this one um, captain is um, or at least, yeah so she has to is bonded to uh, a dead um, strategist and all havoc breaks loose anyway I really enjoyed this book I loved this other book too for totally different reasons because this book went one way and you're like oh that was so weird and different and then this was different and weird and other things and you got to see more of the world and I think that's what I liked about this one is you got more into it and I really enjoyed this as well so they're kind of together on my list because it's the same series and same author but again I said I both read these this year and they both were awesome and I cannot wait for the next book I think it comes out in May or June <laughs> Anyway, um, then the next one, I have, number seven, is The Unyielding by Shelley Lar Larston. Lawrenston, sorry. <laughs> Never think. Anyway, this was the third book in The Call of Crows. Um, I think it's a trilogy. I think that, that she's done with this. Oh my god, these are funny. Uh, I would say these are urban fantasies. These are hilarious. They have to do with uh, women who are called crows, who are a band of women who have died um, tragically and uh one of the uh nordic gods brings them back and says hey you can live again um but you have to work for me kind of thing and um so they they're just they are the craziest women <laughs> i just love it but then there's also some other groups like there are i can't even remember they're they're vikings like they're uh i can't even think that they're um Oh, I can't even think the clan names, but anyway, they were so funny. Anyway, there are other clans and they all have their thing with this. Um, they have um, Norse mythology and stuff in, involved in them and the gods and and uh, Valhalla and all this stuff. Anyway, but this is the third book in the series and it 
follows two characters that I was worried in the first two books that they were they were gonna get books. Oh my gods, they're making noise in the other room. Um, they were gonna make <laughs> they were gonna make a book out of them, and I I was like. But um, it turned out to be really good, and I really enjoyed that book. Anyway, if you like that, if you would like funny, hilarious, like over the top uh, funny, uh, I would totally pick that, up, that series up. It was hilarious. I like some of her other series too, but so far that is my favorite, and I'm looking forward to another book by her in a different series, hopefully this next year. Um, and then I have number six, Between the Living and the Dead by Bill Kreider. He is one of my favorite mystery authors of all time. Um, and I think this is, did I say this was book 22 or so? It's in the 20s. I don't remember now anymore. I, you know, I've read all of them as they come out, except I got a little behind the last couple of years. So I have this one and two other ones. So um, these are just fun mysteries about a small Texas county and uh, the sheriff and all his, his deputies and his coworkers and then his, and the people in the town are just hilarious. And they're just all such fun. And this was a good mystery. I, I, only figured it out near the end so it wasn't when I, I I picked the right thing until near the end so it was really good I really enjoyed that and I always enjoy those that's why it's probably always gonna be on the list is one of those and then um number five is a clay girl by Heather Tucker I loved this book now I I picked this up kind of I mean I got it from the library first to be honest and I actually had to go buy a copy so that tells you how much I loved it so this is and it also is a book that I wasn't sure what I was going to rate it when I got to the end because I was just all the emotions but I did uh, knock it up to a five because it was just fantastic and I you know has to do with a young girl named Ari um, I think it's between ages between 8 and 16 her story and she just comes from a really messed up family um, her dad killed himself in front of uh, she and a couple of her sisters because he was um, found out to be molesting them and so that's just the very beginning and then it's all told from Ari's point of view and the different way she looks at the world and I just really enjoyed this book overall I mean there was a few things probably I know people have nitpicked about but really overall I thought it was a solid read and it was all the feels and I I really enjoyed it um, and then a uh, lovely surprise one <laughs> At number four is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Um, I had no idea what I was getting into when I picked this book up for um, Victober this year. Um, I had heard about The Woman in White and I thought it was like a ghost story and I I don't know what where I heard that. I must have got this and The Woman in Black mixed around. I don't know. I mean I did listen to that as well um, I, during um, Victober just for that or no maybe I did that November. I don't remember. I, I listened to that as well, but so they're totally different. But The Woman in White was just phenomenal, and I really enjoyed this. Um, and again, um, it starts with a, a, a teacher who meets this kind of odd woman on the road who's all dressed in white, and he helps her get away from some other people, not knowing why she um, got away or the whole story behind it. And then he gets kind of um, all tangled up with, him, with that in a family. And uh, it's just, um, I don't, it's so hard to explain, but it was so good and it's huge, but it just kept going and I had no idea where it was gonna go. I had no idea how this was gonna turn out. I, I just, it was a, a, a treat and I really enjoyed this and I can't wait to read more Wilkie Collins because again, this was the first one by him that I've read and I just have to read more of that stuff. That's just awesome. Um, and then number three, <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the series I just finished yesterday. But um, I finished um, The Stone Sky, which is book three. So this is the, the book two and three, um, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky by Jem N.K. Jemisin for um, the, um, <laughs> the Broken Earth Trilogy. <laughs> this fantasy series is awesome. I really enjoyed it all the way through. I am gonna be one of those people who, who says, maybe I like the first book better but overall, it's an excellent series. I thought it was really binge worthy. Like, as I said, I reread the first book and then I went straight into this one and then I just finished this one yesterday. So I'm still processing everything about it, but I still think it's one of the best books that I read this year. I'm putting them together because I because it's a trilogy, I fear, you know, it's, they go together. You know? <laughs> I don't know. But I really um, think that's a great book that, um, Sorry, the um, so the story follows um, 
uh, people who are origins who can um, manipulate the earth and they live in a place called the stillness which is not still because there's a lot of tectonic um, um, issues the planets and uh, just it's uh, it's very gritty the first book and then these ones just you know it's builds on that and the world is just fantastically put together and that uh, world building was awesome and the history of the world uh, that was the part I was so I liked so much um, by the time I got to the third book because we got a huge you know we got by then we knew a lot about what had happened with the world and we you know we were learning a little bit early and then by the end they, we get told so it's really cool I I really enjoyed that series and I will definitely be picking up of one of our older series that I just haven't got to yet and then number two is probably not a surprise because I did a whole gush video on this and that is Seven Surrenders by Ada Palmer. Now I could also bring up Two Like the Lightning but to be honest Two Like the Lightning was like a solid four and I was kind of by the end I was like what the hell just happened? <laughs> you know I was kind of like I liked the beginning and the middle was pretty good and then the end just kind of yeah what's going on? So when I picked up Seven Surrenders I got it from the library and I was unsure of how I was going to feel about this but this book was phenomenal as I said I I went into it with low expectations but this thing blew me out of the water there were so many twists and turns I had no idea where it was going and I loved every minute of this I love this book and I'm really looking forward to reading the will to battle but my library hasn't given me my copy yet <laughs> so um it's just um it was it's a great story it's a futuristic world like it's like you know a couple hundred years into the future all wars have ended um people um live in what are called hives or you know they, so countries have kind of broken down they're not you know you're not from a certain country anymore you're usually from a hive or you're hiveless and um there are seven major major hives and you know some of them have to are like they um deal with transportation or they deal with um like the utopians uh, want to go to Mars and all that, you know, like all their other plans and stuff. And it's just, um, they're all different sections. So, um, it was just, I, I think the world building is great. The first book, uh, again, Too Like the Lightning was a good book. I am not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying that it went in a direction I didn't plan on. But once I read this, it made so much sense. And it, as I said, just blew me away. I, I love this book. This, I love this book. And I am... I'm hoping I remember enough of it that when I get the will to battle I can just jump right in because I did just read this this summer so I'm hoping if not I'll reread it <laughs> anyway and then my favorite book of the year is no surprise if you've been watching any of my videos from probably from when I started my booktube channel um this is a book that I was highly anticipating all year or for the last year and a half or two years since I heard about it first coming out this is one of my favorite writers of all time and so and they returning to one of my favorite fantasy series there that um that uh, that I love to dive into and this is The Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams and this is the first book in The Last King of Ostenard um, which is in the same world as Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, um, which is a series that I read when I was a teenager. And this is just, this was just so, like, it was heartbreaking and nostalgia all mixed together in a world that I remembered so much about and yet learned so many new things that we didn't get to learn in the first book, the first series. So this was great for this. And this had the best cliffhanger endings like every other, every one of the main characters had a cliffhanger ending. So like the last 50 pages was just, it was incredible because you're just like, ah, everybody's in barrel. It's awesome. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I made a whole review on this as well. Again, it's more of just because if you like the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn um, trilogy, I and again, I highly recommend it to anybody who's just getting into fantasy or um, like old school fantasy. I just, it's so, it's so classic to me because maybe because I read it, you know, when I was in my teens, but I, I, I loved that series and it's still one of my favorites of all time. And so when we got to go back in the series and I'm so anticipating the next book, which I'm hoping comes out this year, but this next year, but I don't know for sure. I heard a rumor it might be September, but I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, but this was just a excellent book. Um, you're following Simon, um, who is a character from 
the first book, which maybe I shouldn't have said that, but that's fine. There's a lot of characters in here from the first book. I just, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I love it. Anyway, and he's, and he's one of my favorite characters of all time. So, and there's so many in here that um, it was great to see them because this takes place 30 years after the first set. So it's, it's pretty cool. I just, I, I, you get to see a lot of the characters, what happened to them 30 years later. So, um, and then there's so many questions and I didn't, oh, okay. Now I'm starting to rant, but anyway, anyway, so those are all the books that I consider the best of 2017 that I read. Um, what was one of your favorite books? Did any of these, any of my books, uh, make your list? I don't know. Let me know. Um, I know this is kind of long, but this is the time to gush, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.